Um, so I'm doing my presentation on di the digital audit and how firms are getting there and how it can help and change the auditing process. And I want to focus on connectivity, data analysis, and visualization. So first, I want to bring up this quote that was mentioned last, uh, last class. If they, were ask, uh, if they were to ask a user what they wanted in relation to candles, they would have said longer burning, smokeless candles, never a light bulb. So I know we talked about this last class, and I wanted to bring it up because I think this is how uh, accounting firms are viewing or were viewing the digital audit processes. And the, prote uh, the profession tends to be very conservative and rarely changes. And in my opinion, shifting to digital audit will change accounting more than it ever has in the past and move the working world forward as a result. Um, so really, there's no clear cut definition to digital audit. Everyone looks at it a different way. Every firm has a different definition for it. So I want to bring up this cool example I found from Panos Kakoulis with uh, Deloitte. And he compares what's happening in the audit industry to what happened in the fitness industry and compares it to training for marathons and triathlons, which was very difficult before technology like Apple Watches and Fitbits, et cetera. So now athletes can use this information to change their experience, track their data, schedule workouts, be alerted when they need to hydrate, and ultimately prevent injury um, and be more sustainable due to the information they now have access to. And taking it a little further with my own depiction of the analogy, um, if you don't understand how to train for a marathon and triathlon, this data may be worthless to you. But on the contrary, if you're a distance athlete and know how to train already for an event, then this data may make your training process more efficient and effective, improving your capabilities and ultimately making you a better athlete. So we as auditors must be athletes and not just someone who signs up for a race with a Fitbit. Understanding the data and tools that can be used in the audit practice will help individuals and teams leverage the information they're given to give the client better, more, uh, better and more efficient audit. Um, so to continue, PwC and EY both dis describe the digital audit as a way to use tools to digitize processes and make the audit more efficient. And just to brush over what KPMG describes some benefits of digital auditing te techniques as is enhancing effectiveness, additional business insights, greater efficiency, better detection of fraud, waste, and abuse. Um, and keeping all this in mind, I kind of came up with my own definition of digital audit being that auditors using tools and analytics to better leverage technology and audit processes to efficiently give clients accurate information and analysis. So um, digitize, digitizing processes is something all big four firms are moving they're all forms are moving to, towards, but the big four is truly leading the way. Um, and as future auditors, it's important that we are prepared and able to learn as the new processes and technology come to surface and continue to change. So as I mentioned, who's leading the way? It's the big four firms. Uh, three of the big four firms have contributed a total of $9 billion to artificial intelligence and automation. KPMG's invested $5 billion. Uh, PwC $3 billion and EY $1 billion. And Deloitte has not disclosed an investment in AI though they too have integrated the use of AI into their business, main, mainly falling into the categories of processes and insights. Um, the big four firms are using their size and human capital to gain a comparative advantage over all the other firms and truly change their, uh, change their audit processes. And along with the investment in new technology, the big four firms understand the importance of having employees that are well-trained in the areas of new technology, uh, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So firms investment in education um, having these technologies come to surface would be useless if the employees didn't know how to work them. Uh, relating back to my example, like the person who doesn't work out and just gets an Apple Watch and expects to sign up for the triathlon because he has all that data. Um, so some notable investments from the big four um, over the past couple of years, included in the graphs below. Um, EY has contributed $500 million yearly since 2016. Um, in employee education, and then $530 million last year in the fiscal year of 2019. PwC contributed $224 million in employee training. Deloitte's investment in their training facility in 2011 um, consisted of $300 million to build uh, Deloitte University located in Texas. And recently, KPMG invested $450 million to build a brand new training facility in Orlando, Florida, um, which is the lake house. Um, and KPMG, for example, KPMG saw value in this because they disclosed spending about $100 million a year for travel pertaining to employee training 
Um, and firms have invested in self-guided learning platforms such as Udemy, Coursera, to help employees gain an understanding of new technologies and useful things to learn relevant to these new technologies emerging. And companies are providing um, badges and certifications for online and actual field work in certain areas to incentivize employees to gain an understanding and learn about these new emerging technologies to enhance the digital audit. Um, for example, Ernst & Young has a badge program. They have 118 different badges that an employee can attain. And each badge has four levels, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. And after bronze, silver, gold, platinum, you have to do some sort of work relevant to your engagement uh, to earn that badge. And a majority of the badges offered are pertaining to emerging technology, digital items, and data analytics. And to kind of put it in perspective of how serious firms are taking this in 2019, Ernst & Young delivered 14 million learning hours to their employees, which resulted in an average of 54 learning hours per employee. So to get into the digital audit now, the tools and strategies firms are using. Um, Adam and Nick, as I mentioned before, met, uh, touched on a lot of these, uh, but some terms that come to surface when talking about digital processes, connectivity, cloud, analytics, AI, RPA, machine learning, integration, emerging technology, drones, blockchain, automation, OCR, data, data visualization, and NLP, and then some tools associated with those terms. Some are repeats because they are terms and tools. Um, Microsoft Office, macros, RPA, AI, PDF editor, Power BI, Python, data extrapolation methods, it's mostly, mostly using Python, RFID and drones, blockchain, Tableau, Internet of Things, Altrex, DocuSign. And most of these are built into the cloud-based platforms, which I'll touch on next slide, that all the big four firms have. Um, and it's important to become familiar with all those going into auditing so you're prepared for uh, the technology changing and advancing throughout your career. So the cloud-based audit platforms, for example, KPMG uses Clara, powered by Microsoft Azure, which is their smart audit, audit platform. Uh, EY uses Canvas, their global audit platform, PwC Connect and Deloitte Connect, both uh, audit tools they use for collaboration. Um, and a study from Deloitte showed that 76% of the audit committee members believe that advanced technology should be used more extensively to just make the audit process easier than it's been in the past. And these platforms powered by the cloud improve means of communication with our clients, saving them time when supporting the audit. So people can be all over the world and communicate through these platforms, share data safely. Um, and it also provides on-demand visibility for audit teams and clients with dashboards that make it simple to manage information and the needs in the audit, which could eliminate constant emails back and forth, phone calls, and things along that line. And like I just mentioned, it provides better security for the client data instead of sending data sets over email or sharing it over certain means. Um, it could upload it to these platforms where everyone has access to it and it's all in one place. So like I mentioned, these platforms provide an opportunity for the clients to deliver data and support straight to the platform from anywhere in the world. So next I'm going to talk about data analysis, which a lot of firms have their own uh, tools that they use hand in hand with these cloud based platforms. Um, so obviously, as we discussed most of this class, Auditors are also data analysts at this point. So I got to interview an insurance manager for EY who's on the digital audit team, and I'll get into what he mentioned, but similar to the audit tools uh, used to provide connectivity to audit teams across the world, firms also have data analysis tools integrated with artificial intelligence, machine learning, natural language processing, OCR, um, to analyze and depict large data sets uh, to provide the client with insights and confidence in their financial reporting. So when interviewing manager from EY who's a member of the digital audit team, I asked what skills us as new auditors should focus on when coming into um, a firm, any accounting firm, big four, or smaller firm. Um, and he mentioned that at EY, they generally focus on data analysis, automation, and business insights. And he goes on to mention that the next step in going digital will be having auditors actually automate processes using tools like UiPath, which we worked on in class. And he also mentioned that Python and those other uh, more difficult skills are great to have an understanding of, but they uh, firms will usually have teams that work on the back office stuff. So auditors will be able to focus on making decisions and providing clients with the best information. Um, so to touch on another tool, macros are commonly used in automating certain analytics and data cleaning and analysis features. And a basic understanding can help auditors clean data and understand the time that running macros can save in basic data analysis. 
And then pertaining to this big data, which is what all big four firms are moving towards and all firms in general, um, EY and PwC, for example, use uh, tools called Helix and Halo and their data analysis tools with integrated machine learning and AI that help auditors quickly analyze, analyze a company's full data set and depict that uh, data and give the clients better information. And Excel is the underlying program where most of the data stored CSV files, Excel files, and organized knowing how to use these data tools along with tools like Altrex can make data analysis process more efficient. So for example, uh, when interviewing manager at EY, he discussed Altrex and Altrex is a code free way that auditors can come up with insights and make predictions by automating manual data processes. And to kind of run through a quick example, when I was interning, I was performing RevRex on large data sets consisting of about 10 million transactions broken into seven or eight CSV files. And after my comp computer crashed multiple times, trying to pivot these millions of cells. I completed the task in roughly three to four hours. It should have taken two hours, but my after the technical difficulties, three to four, and I asked my manager, knowing what Altrex was, but not how it worked or how it functioned, if this was a task that Altrex could have been used for. And to kind of, we had a little time, so to show me the power of the program um, and review my work at the same time, he started the analysis from the beginning, created a workflow within 10 minutes, and then ran the data in five minutes, and the numbers tied out perfectly the same, but the task was cut by one twelfth of the time that it took me to do it. And then according to EY, uh, three key differentiators that make data analytics platforms a vital tool in improving audit quality is can handle data sets of virtually any size. It's available to all the teams across the world and its audit programs are embedded um, in the analytic audit approach in their methodology. And uh, they were referring to Helix and I've actually used Helix before and I'm gonna talk more about data visualization in the next slide. But to touch on something Helix can do if you're uh, they have a JE analyzer, journal entry analyzer, and which actually gives uh, auditors the ability to see all the journal entries that the clients uh, input. And this is a great tool that allows you to see it in a graph. So all the graphs that spike, you would check the occupation of the employee and make sure that they had the right means to input the journal entry. And if there was any bars that were spiking from employees that didn't have the authority to input journal entries, that's something we'd ask the clients about and seek more information on. And that's a form of data visualization, which firms are also moving towards to analyze big data. So tools like Power BI and Tableau are giving firms the opportunity to provide information in a visual context and better explain and understand trends in data. And analyzing trends in data helps firms to really drill down and identify risks along with unusual activity and reporting. Um, so I was actually a part of the testing um, of a recruiting example that a firm was going to use to present to potential new employees, the power of Power BI and how data visualization can change an audit. So the first 40 minutes of the presentation consisted of confirmation of a made up firm's assets under management. And we found various errors in the reporting of commissions, values and rates that were said to be agreed upon. Uh, and throughout the 40 minutes, we had recorded three separate occasions that we would have need to obtain different support from the client and more information. And after finishing the study, the manager did the same thing and ran the test uh, through Power BI, the data visualization tool, very similar to Tableau. And he shared his dashboard and the information was all shown in a graph with trend lines and the inconsistencies, inconsistencies were seen very clearly. And he had the ability to drill down into the exact portion of the original data. And it allowed for us to show the client what we found all in one screen and request the support from all three items that we needed with one um, screenshot or email or just sharing the screen from Power BI to show them what, what we needed. Um, so obviously the future, I know it was a big topic in this class, um, is continuous audit. With all these things in place, automation, artificial intelligence, machine learning, firms will have to lev leverage these new tools and technologies and begin to streamline processes to increase the capabilities of automation in the audit. And this really presents an opportunity for the auditors to give uh, better, better insight, better analysis, and put more focus into the high risk areas. So we may see things in our time like real time alerts and automation of processes, which will help us look at information in a whole new way and give different insights. And really having more ideas on the table and more innovation will change the day to day for auditors across the world and allow for them to leverage their skills and provide more value to firms and clients. So how can we adapt? 
before I wrap up, it's important that auditors have an understanding of all the tools and technology that are being used in today's audit. So knowing one, one technology really well may help in certain things, but understanding how all the tools can be put together and produce the digital audit will make employees much more powerful, ultimately bringing more value to the clients. So does anyone have any questions or comments?